Hi, how's it going today? I ho hope you're looking forward to a new episode, and this comes on the heels of Easter, just after the Passover. So um, what I'm going to talk about is the resurrection. And, as always, I'm going to start with Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, you can um, disagree with me all you want. You can call me a fool. That's fine. I don't hold it against you. But here's the thing. I believe in the resurrection. And I'm going to tell you why I believe it. Not just It's not just based upon something I want to believe, but I believe there's actual um, scientific possibility that it's, it's true. And the reason I say that is whether, even if I wasn't a Christian and I didn't believe the Bible and I didn't believe in God, I was an atheist. And I believe that um, the world just came to be based upon chance and, you know, whatever you want to call it. But here's the fact. Life is miraculous. Whether it's by a, the hand of God or by some random chance coincidence, life is miraculous. We cannot reproduce it. We don't know how it happened. And even if we could figure out how it happened, the fact that it just happened without um, an intelligent any intelligence there tells me it's a miracle. Um, you know, because like we build things and we understand things. And if nobody expects things to come into existence without some sort of guidance. And so for life just to begin in itself is a miracle. If you ask me, the universe itself is a miracle. It's an unexplained occurrence. It's, a, it's so, that's all it is, is an unexplained occurrence. So if we can say life actually is came into existence, and I believe it came into existence by an intelligent being, God, God the Creator. And so if God can create something out of nothing, then certainly He can take something that has been degraded and restore it. And that's what the resurrection is. And even in the oldest book of the Bible, um, Job is considered one of the oldest books, it appears that he believed in the resurrection. It says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. That's Job 19, 25 and 26. So the resurrection is not just something that was made up by Jesus or in the New Testament. In fact, it really is a central idea in my last episode, we talked about the tree of eternal life. You can't have eternal life if you die and then you never come back to life. That that wouldn't be eternal life. So there has to be a resurrection. And the apostles knew, <clears throat> the apostles knew that going around telling people that some that their savior rose from the dead was not going to be accepted easily. A lot of people would scoff at it, and so they knew they were up to this challenge. And why would they if they didn't believe it? But Paul says this, I am a debtor, and he, this is out of Romans um, 14, 17. I am a debtor to both the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise, so that as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel unto you that are, in, that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What Paul was saying there, he felt obligated to go to the Roman citizen, the Greek, um, and the, the Greek citizens, the people who um, were Hellenized, you know, educated, supposedly, and then the barbarians who didn't speak Greek, to the, to the wise and the unwise, the educated and the uneducated. He knew his audience was going to be vast, and he would have to preach this gospel to all of them. And he, you, if you realize, he was going into Rome, 
he wanted to go to Rome, and wherever he went was in, in the Roman world, and there was Greek philosophy, and the Greeks thought they were super wise, and so he knew he would be like taken as a fool, but he says, I'm not ashamed of this message, because I believe it. I've seen the risen Lord. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, even though you're going to make fun of me for saying it. I am not ashamed. Um, I, you know, I was young once, just like many of you may be listening to me. I was young and I didn't think about death much and I didn't have much life under my belt, but I am 62 years of age. Wow. Time just goes, but I'm 62 years of age and I have so many memories, so many good memories. I have three wonderful daughters that I've raised. I have a wonderful wife. I have great um, family members, and I've done a lot of wonderful things. And the older I get, the more I hate death. And the older I get, I just want to hang on to all these memories. I don't want them um, to disappear. It would be a tragedy for me to go through this life and put all the effort, because it didn't come easy. Life doesn't come easy. The good times of life does not come easy. You have to work for it. You have to sacrifice for it. You have to love in sacrifice for it. And you get paid back. But it's like, if I die, and that's the end of it, what was the point? I mean, sure, I enjoyed it for a moment. I enjoyed it for the time I got to live. But being 62 years of age, I know life is short. I don't have a lot of time left. Because if the, if I live till in, I'm 82, that's 20 years. You think that's a long time. Not when you're 60. It seemed like 40 was just yesterday. And so 80 is going to come really quick. And if I can live to 90 or 100, it's still going to be very quick and my life is over. And what was the point if there is no life after this? If death is it and I'm done, what was the point? What was the effort? And what do I leave behind in a world that's just doomed to be destroyed through heat death and destruction? Because that's there's nothing that can sustain the world according to the second law of thermodynamics. So in 1 Corinthians 15, 17 through 19, Paul says this, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, and ye are yet in your sins, and they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And if this <clears throat> and if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. And I, I would be I would be miserable to think that I have worked so hard to do the right thing and and I've reaped con I've reaped benefits of it no doubt but you know I mean I've faithfully tithed to my church for 30 some years you think of all that money that I gave to help the gospel go out because I believed it would it helps people but if I had spent that on myself I could have done a lot more things and I, I'd be mo a man most miserable for giving that up. But I'll tell you what, if I died and I did, I rejected Christ and there was eternal life and there was hell, then I would have given up even more. So um, I say that, you know, Paul's talking about the resurrection, if there's no resurrection. But if there is a resurrection, then you can also make the case that if there is a resurrection, men who reject it, they're going to be even more miserable. Um, you can call me a fool, but I think that anybody who um, believes in humanity as a purposeless existence is more of a fool. I think that's the most foolish thing to do, is to think that I live, I live in a purposeless world. People will this is what I don't understand. I cannot grasp it. But I've talked to many atheists and they'll they'll say, yeah, I know the world's purposeless and meaningless, but I have meaning and I have love. And it's like, that doesn't... I know you, you can have meaning, you can have love, but you have to ask yourself, why? That's the question I don't think people face. Why? Why do I feel this way? Why do I even assume that I have I can have meaning or have love? There, there's got to be a connection there, and it's like you can't say, "I was sent, I was put in this world for no reason whatsoever, and whatever I make is meaning." That just seems 
That seems foolish to me. So call me foolish for believing in a resurrection, but hey, I think it's foolish for not hoping in a resurrection. Um, I also think that the biggest reason people don't want to believe in a resurrection and believe in life ever after in heaven is because they don't like God. I mean, I go on Twitter, I do, and you just find atheists, you know, at one tweet after the other trying to dismiss God. And it's like, why are you trying so hard to dismiss something you don't believe in? It's like, if there is no God, then just move on, <laughs> you know, move on. Why call him a bad, a bad being? Why call him a bad God if he's not a God at all? I mean, it's like me, you know, say, I don't, you know, spend all my time dissing De Batman because I don't like Batman. And I think he's a not a good superhero, you know. I mean, you could argue, we could get in debate about it, yeah. But it's foolishness, it's nonsense. Batman is fictitious. So if God's fictitious, what are you, what are you doing? So, um, I'm just saying this not for those who are atheists. I'm not. I'm saying this for those who are thinkers, who have open minds and um, will consider some things because I think this is worth considering. First Corinthians fifteen fifty four. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put, must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall be put on, shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass, saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And that's what I hope for my life. I hate death. I hate the thought of it coming to an end. You may hope your life comes to an end, but I'm telling you, I loved my life, and I love my life now, and I don't want it to come to an end. Sure, I've had my problems, things I want to forget, but I, there's things I want to hang on to, and I hope that the things, the things that I want to forget, I will forget in the life after, and the things that I... Um, love and I did well at I hope I can remember and cherish like my kids and my wife and my parents and and all those things I hope that I have this hope in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and he changed my life as a young man I did some things that I am ashamed of and I a fear of where I would have gone had I not received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I've seen this many, many times over. I've seen a lot of people turn their life over to Christ. Truly, not just take on a religious tone or take on a religious endeavor, but actually have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Accept Him as their Lord and Savior. And I've seen so many changes. You know, we're not all perfect, but I'll tell you what. The ones that I have seen change... I, I would choose them to be my friend over anybody else any day because I can trust them that they'll love me and they'll care for me and they'll, they'll watch over me and I can even trust my possessions with them as I have. And so um, that's Christianity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Either you believe it or you don't. He's either your Lord or he's not. Either you're going to go to heaven because of his resurrection or you're going to go to hell because you reject his resurrection. That's it. Hey, thanks for listening. It's been a short one. Have a great day. I love you all. And you can find out actually a timeline that I wrote because in the Gospels it seems kind of confusing about the account of the resurrection. But if you go to husbandman.org and you type in the resurrection, you'll find an article where I lay out the all the uh, accounts into a timeline that makes reasonable sense. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. Um, see you next time. Bye.